you are constantly blaming the world and your negativity is affecting everyone around you. And that is not okay. He wasn't a yes man. He wanted the best for the best in him. And so he kept him accountable. And he said, listen to this recording and hear yourself talk. His friend listened to the recording, heard himself talk, and he woke up. He understood what David was saying. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. My name is June Yu, and today we're covering the topic about, we all know that you are the byproduct of the people that you surround yourself with, but how can you sniff out bad friends? And then if you're able to sniff them out, maybe many of you guys have already gone through that process. What do we do next? So we're going to be covering all of that in this video, so stay tuned. Identifying if they are good friends, I think can be boiled down to several simple points, but let's start with these two first that coincide with one another. And the first is a little bit more obvious and that's, can you share with them bad news and them be there for you? Can you tell them bad news and they actually feel sad? and them having the patience to actually listen to you? Or are they immediately trying to tell a story of something that had happened to them that was worse and trying to top your story so the attention and the focus could be on them again? Or are they secretly underneath their mask, their ugly mask, happy? that something is going awry for you because they view you as competition and so that any time something bad happens to you, it's actually their opportunity to rise up ahead. Do they make condescending remarks when you share with them bad news? Do they say, it's your fault? Do they say that, oh, you're being dramatic? Do they say that, oh, you're being stupid? Do they make it feel like you don't actually deserve any type of understanding and empathy as you share your bad news? That's a sign of a bad friend. You should be able to go to your friend knowing that they'll have open arms to embrace you and that you can wholeheartedly and open-heartedly share what is going on in your life and know that you won't be judged for it in a manner that's disrespectful to you. I think the second way to identify that coincides with the first, but maybe a little bit less obvious, is can you share with them good news? And I believe this is just as important, right? If something good is happening in your life, can you share that with your friend and then be actually happy for you and then actually celebrate with you? Or do they shut you down? Do they tell you it's not that big of a deal? And again, immediately tell a story of something good that had happened to them, even if it was years back to try and undermine your story. Do they do that? Do they give you a fake word of encouragement and then actually prey on your downfall behind your back? Do they talk badly about you to other people as you share this good news? Do they do that? You need to be able to share positives in your life and your friend needs to be able to take that in, understand that's actually good for them as well. If you don't have that type of support, what happens is you recognize that repeated behavior and then whenever something good happens in your life and you wanna tell someone, you actually start shying away. You start half-heartedly opening up to them and going to them 
saying, oh, something might have happened that turned out to be good. And you're not fully embracing that. And you should never have to do that with a good friend. Can you share with them bad news and good news and have that necessary understanding, that necessary respect, and that necessary encouragement and support? That's how you can identify good friends. And before I move into any of the other ways to identify a good friend, I have to say this. I think people misunderstand the fact that it's morally okay for you to choose people that help you, that support you, and shy away from those that drag you down. Actually, I believe it's your moral responsibility to do that. Because you want the best for the best in them. So hold them to a standard. You see, because if you allow them to behave in the way they have been behaving in terms of bringing you down in a manner that brings everyone else down around you, you don't address it outright. You are enabling them. You are telling them subconsciously that it's okay, that it's okay to treat you that way. And it isn't okay in the slightest. And so sometimes, sometimes it's necessary for you to walk away because that's how you hold them to that standard so that you tell them, okay, then you live your life this way. I'm going to go ahead and live my life the way that I want to. And maybe years down the line, you'll wake up from this brutal nightmare that you've gotten yourself into. You see, I, I think about this type of analogy all the time. And it's about how lifeguards are trained. When a lifeguard identifies someone panicking and drowning in the waters, they'll approach them but they don't immediately go to try and save them. No, they'll put their foot out and they'll wave their hands like this and they will tread while they say, hey, I'm here to save you. But before I do, I need you to calm down. And if they refuse to, and if they continue to be in this panic state and they cling on to you, that lifeguard is taught to kick away and to swim back ashore. Now, this may sound cruel because you are allowing that person to drown. Yes, but isn't it better than both of them drowning? Does that make sense, right? Isn't it better for the lifeguard to one, not put themselves in a dangerous situation so that they'll drown and then maybe go back to shore and try to get them help that is the help that they actually need. Sometimes in life, you need to edit your relationships because you've decided to flip this switch to master self-control, to master self-discipline to work on yourself thoroughly and the people around you aren't ready for that. So you can do whatever you want to try and bring them along, but if they're not reciprocating that energy, sometimes all you can do is delete that relationship, is to remove yourself from it because you don't want both of yourselves to drown, do you? If you are offering your words of wisdom in a genuine attempt to help said individual and they treat you with contempt, then shut up, then stop talking, right? Because at that point, you are just throwing 
your words away. You are devaluing the words that you have to offer. And so this doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help people when they're in their lowest times. Absolutely. But that's a different story. I'm talking about individuals that have their eyes pointed downwards and it's so obvious and they're doing everything to bring you along with the people around them in that same direction and you've tried to help but they don't reciprocate that energy so what can you do you need to step away you need to step away and that, I believe, is the morally right thing to do. Another way of identifying if these are good friends is, do they gossip? And do they spread rumors? Because those are pretty good signs that that isn't the type of friend you want to be around. You see, because words have tremendous power. I've been in a situation in which people have made up lies and have just run with it because it made them feel good about themselves and it tore me apart because that destroys my reputation. Now, I've also had close friends that have experienced something similar and their situations were worse they battled depression. They had a high level of anxiety for a very long time. They had all these issues with their mental health because again, words have tremendous power. And if your so-called friends are using that power for evil, those are some horrible people to surround yourself with. And what you have to think about, right, is if a friend comes up to you and says, hey, X, Y, and Z, those individuals talked badly about you. And they keep doing that, right? They tell you numerous times that this has happened. At first, you might think, oh my goodness, I'm so happy that he had told me that. He must really be on my side. He must really be sticking up for me. Ask yourself, why are they telling him that? Why are they so comfortable telling him that? Why are they so confident telling her that? Could it be that he or she or they are doing the same and talking badly about you? Be careful. Okay, because that type of gossiping and rumor creation and spreading, it's contagious behavior. If you're constantly around people that do that for fun, that's a pretty darn good sign that those aren't true friends to keep close to you. Do they lie to you and not keep you accountable that's a really good sign that you should throw them away, right? You should throw those relationships away. You should delete them. Why? Well, let me first start by saying those yes men that you constantly surround yourself with, they're not doing you any good. Yes, does it feel good to have your thoughts constantly affirmed by the people around you? Absolutely, because it makes yourself think highly of yourself. You think that, oh, all my thoughts are good. All my behaviors are good. Now, you know the fact that not everything you do, not everything you think is good. You need people around you to keep you in check. If you constantly have people saying, oh, yes, June, you're doing just fine. Yes, June. You don't have to change anything. Yes, June, that evil thought of yours, run with it. 
That's bad. If you're my friend, I'm telling you straight up, you got something in your teeth. Oh, you got a booger in your nose. Oh, that outfit doesn't look all that good. If you ask me my opinion, I'm going to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because I want you to feel confident when you go out in public. I want you to feel good about how you look and your appearance. And I'm going to make sure that, that I tell you my honest feedback. I'm not a yes man for you. I'm someone that wants the best for you. But it's not even just about your appearance. It goes much deeper than that. There are negative effects that go way beyond just a public embarrassment. So much worse. If you have yes men around you and if you complain to them and say, oh, only if my situation was different, then I would have achieved certain goals. Oh, I'm going to shoot low with my goals because I'm afraid of taking chances. Oh, I'm okay not applying for this job because I'm afraid of the interview process. I'm afraid of rejection. And your friends are telling you that's okay behavior and they're yes men and saying, oh, you're okay, that's totally fine. Those people don't actually want the best for you. Those are the people that secretly are thinking, nice, now we have an excuse to not chase after our dreams. Or even worse, and this happens in a lot of cases, they like the fact that you're not going out of your way to tackle on these big goals in your life because then they can get a leg up. They view you as competition and they want to keep you in a lowly place so they feel better about themselves. And that happens with the physical appearance as you go in public so that you can look good, you can feel good about you and they're not looking their best. But same with your goals and same with your career and same with your money and your wealth. If you're not living a type of life that matches your aspirations, right? But your friend does and he's next to you and he compares you and makes himself feel real good about himself. That's a bad person to be around. They don't respect your boundaries. That's a good sign to delete that relationship. At the very least, edit that relationship. And I can give you an example uh, that applies to me and my past. I am okay with joking about most things in life. I really am. And I think that humor is essential. But there are certain things that are off limits. And one of those things was my future, my goals, my dreams. That's one thing that I wouldn't let anyone talk down upon. That was a boundary that I had set. Now, why did I start setting this? Because when I was younger, around middle school and early high school, I didn't have that boundary. And I would constantly be made fun of every time that I had talked about these massive dreams of mine. And people would say, oh, that's not possible. Oh, you're in over your head. Oh, June, be realistic. You would never get there. And that actually hurt my confidence a lot to the point that I would stop talking about those things. And that should have never been the case. And then I would start making things up when people would ask me what do you want to be in the future. And I would say a lot lesser goal than I actually had in mind because I didn't want to be judged. As I grew older, I recognized the power of having that confidence in myself that I would one day get there and I was a lot more loud and bold about those dreams. Some of those dreams I've been able to achieve already. Now, as I got into college, there would be people that would still try to cross that boundary and they'd say, oh, you're being too serious. Oh, you're being too dramatic. 
I looked him straight in the eye. I didn't cower. I didn't lower my head. I didn't laugh it off. Because if you do, if you chuckle and you give them that satisfaction, again, it gives them that subconscious approval that it's okay to treat you that way. But it's not. If you've established a boundary, good friends will respect that boundary. Because boundaries, all of us need to have them. And boundaries, setting them, is a sign to yourself that you respect yourself. And if people are constantly crossing those boundaries and don't care at all that you've set them in the first place, Aren't they disrespecting you? Are they constantly asking for favors without returning any of them? You see, relationships are two-way straight, right? You need to be able to give in that relationship as much as you take. But I've been in a lot of relationships where I've just given and given and given and it was then an expectation that I would give even more. Something as small as, oh, June, you have your car. You can drive us, can't you? Oh, I don't have my wallet again. June, you make good money. Can't you pay? And there's no problem with paying for others, actually, if you've been around my content for long enough, you know that hospitality is something in my culture that is highly valued. And so paying for your friend's meal is not only something that I believe is good, it's a responsibility. It's a rightful expectation. But don't get that twisted. That doesn't mean that you are an open wallet that your time doesn't matter, that people just step all over you because they know that you will say yes. Those are not the type of people to be around. You wanna be around people that go out of their way as well to offer you a hand, even when you don't necessarily need it and you can turn it down but you need to have that reciprocity. You need to have that level of effort on their end. Because then that's not a relationship anymore. If you don't establish that, that just becomes a one-way street. And that you're not getting elevated in that relationship. You're just constantly being held down. You don't want to be around people like that because if you're watching this and you've been around the content long enough, you know that on our end, we do whatever we can for that close group around us to show them that we appreciate them. We'll go out of our way to, to gift you, to give you words of affirmation, to show you love and recognition in every way possible. But if you're the only one doing that, walk away. I think a lot of this can be boiled down to you doing an honest assessment of your relationships and seeing whether or not you feel drained after contact with them. As simple as that. If you honestly reflect on your conversations, on your interactions, on your hangouts with those individuals, do you feel drained more often than not? Because that's a pretty good sign that that's a relationship you don't want to be around. David Goggins, I speak about him a lot because he's made such an impact on my life with his books. Um, 
And one story that he had told in one of those books was about this one friend that he had. And he loved him dearly, but any time that friend would come over to his home, he would complain. He would talk about these external factors in his life that were holding him back in his life. And he would put these blames on everyone else but himself. And he would pour out all this negativity and hatred and bitterness onto David. Now, after the first few times, David was okay with it to try and empathize with his friend. But after an ample number of times of this same type of experience, David had the awareness to say, he is absolutely sucking the energy out of me. He is absolutely draining every environment that he walks into. And he said, no more. No more will I allow this. So what he did was he put his phone on recording mode and he put it face down while he was in conversation with that same friend. And he just kept it on recording. After their conversation, David looked at him straight up and said, you are constantly blaming the world and your negativity is affecting everyone around you. And that is not okay. He wasn't a yes man. He wanted the best for the best in him. And so he kept him accountable. And he said, listen to this recording and hear yourself talk. His friend listened to the recording, heard himself talk, and he woke up. He understood what David was saying. And actually, in fact, he was able to be rid of this type of behavior because David had kept him in check. But he talks about how if he hadn't done that, and this was his experience with other friends, that he would have just removed him from his life because he wasn't willing to drown with him. Do you do that? Are you able to keep the people around you accountable? And if they don't listen, and if they treat you with contempt, can you walk away? Now, at this point, if you've stayed long enough for this video, you've probably have come across this thought in your mind of, then how do I find good friends? How do I establish a good community? And I think that's a beautiful question. Because we, as human beings, are social creatures. Eventually, you do need a community that does support you, that you are able to share good news with and bad news with, that you are supported by and encouraged by. Absolutely. And so I'll answer this question, but the answer might not necessarily be something you like to hear. But this is the real truth. This is what I've experienced. First, you recognize the negativity, and this video hopefully has shown you how to do that. Number two, you walk away from the negativity. You understand that those relationships are no longer serving your future. It's no longer serving all these goals and aspirations that you have, that they are draining you more than filling you. And so you walk away. Number three, and this is the part that you might not necessarily like to hear, but you be alone for a while. You see, you need the time to work on yourself, to focus on yourself, to cut out the distractions, to go on ghost mode, whatever you want to call it. But you have to do that inner healing. You need to get in touch with your inner dialogue. You need to develop the high value skills. You need to become the most attractive version of yourself. And we have a video in terms of how to establish that confidence, but you need to be alone to be able to do that. Because if you're constantly spreading yourself thin by being around that community, if you didn't do steps one and two, then you won't have the necessary time, space, or energy to be able to do what's necessary for you to grow personally. Now, number four, 
you become the magnet in which like-minded people come together and grow. Now that's the fun part, right? That's the great news. That's what we're all looking for. You see, if you've gone through the process of developing yourself and making yourself this ideal version of you, then other people that are similar to you that have also done that inner work will be attracted to you. And that's how you establish a community. Now, that doesn't mean that people are just gonna come knocking at your door and say, I'm ready for this community. Absolutely not. After you've gone through step three, you put yourself in situations and environments that you know there's a high likelihood that other high value individuals will be at. So if you are a student, this is your opportunity to join clubs. If you are outside of school, this is your opportunity to join seminars. You put yourself in those environments and then you become that magnet. I promise people will gravitate towards you because you just exude a level of confidence that is so attractive. And that's how you build that community. Now, the reason why I believe the steps are so important to follow in that order is because let's say you had gone through step three, you had done the inner work necessary, and you just got fortunate enough to stumble across some high value individuals in your life. I can't be confident at all that you'll be able to sustain those relationships because probably if they are willing to let you in to their life, it's because you had on a mask, right? You're pretending to be this put together individual, this high value individual yourself. And if you hadn't done the work prior, that's a mask. And high value individuals can recognize that, can sniff out lies pretty quickly. So you give them enough time and they're gonna understand, oh, this person actually has nothing to contribute to the community that we are building. And it's not their responsibility to build you up from scratch. It's your responsibility to have done the work. And so if you want to sustain these relationships and to have a community of other high value individuals that can be for the long term, then you need to follow those steps in order. But you do that and I promise you that community that you'll have it's one that you would have never experienced to that point. It's a very beautiful, beautiful thing. Now, communities don't need to be dozens and dozens of people. Right now, in my circle, it's only a handful of people, but I love them to death. I know that they got my back and that I got theirs. I think that's the community we're all searching for.